Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and Cells as the Basis of Life, module number one. This is video number nine and we're going to be looking at osmosis. Just like we did with diffusion, we're going to be investigating the way in which materials can move into and out of cells and we're going to be doing this uh, primarily through a practical investigation. But again, we just wanted to give you a little bit of background about the process of osmosis and how it compares to diffusion. So firstly, what is osmosis? Well, osmosis is a net movement of water across a membrane. So it is an example of diffusion, but it's diffusion of water. And this is an interesting aspect of diffusion because what it means is that often what we find happening is the reverse of what we were looking at before. So when you take a solution and you have an area of high salt with a membrane in the center and low salt on the other side, then diffusion tells us that the salt will try and move from the area of high concentration to the area of low salt concentration. And that is a passive process that will automatically happen. But when we're thinking about it in terms of water, we have to reverse our thinking a little bit. A low salt environment is one that's very dilute and hence it will be high in water. An area of high salt concentration will be more concentrated. And as a solution, it will have comparatively less water. So if diffusion is the movement of particles from where they are in high concentration to low concentration, then that actually means that the water is going to move in the opposite direction. Which is exactly what we would expect to happen. If we're talking about salt solutions, we're talking about ratios of salt to water. Obviously, if we have high salt um, in one area, then that would correspond to low water in another. So this is one of the interesting things that happens across cell membranes, is that you can have particles moving in opposite directions across these membranes. The important thing about osmosis is it's very much dependent on the amount of solutes in the solutions in relation to one another, that is, on either side of the membrane. And in order to look at these in a little bit more detail, we're going to describe three different types of solutions. One with a very high solute concentration, we're going to call hypotonic. A solution with a lower solute concentration, we'll call hypotonic. And when two solutions, when the solution outside the cell is the same as the inside the cell in terms of the concentration of particles, we call that isotonic. We have a net movement from hypo to hyper. That is where the water is high, low solute, to where the water is low and high solute. So let's have a look at each of these in a little bit more detail. The first one we'll look at is a hypertonic solution. In a hypertonic solution, what we're looking at is that the cell has a higher solute concentration than the solution. So, this, so we're talking here about a salty cell and um, dilute uh, external environment. We are describing a hypertonic solution because the salt concentration outside of the cell is lower than what it is inside the cell. So that means the salt would want to move outside of the cell, but it also means that the water is going to move in. So we get a net movement of water into our cell. Now notice I've used the word net because in our little diagram we can see that some water may actually move out of the cell but more water is going to move into the cell. So when we add up what's going out, and compare it with what's coming in, we find that overall there's an excess of water that's coming into the cell. Now the problem with that is if too much water comes in, as the cell becomes more and more turgid, it can potentially burst. There is a possibility, particularly if there's no um, structures to counter this, then it's possible that the cell can burst and obviously that's um, a major problem for the cell. So you can have too much of a good thing, but this is an example of a cell in a hypertonic solution. 
If the cell is in an isotonic solution, iso means same. We may, you may be familiar with isobars, which connect um, on weather maps points of the same air pressure. Um, and isotonic just means that the solution outside the cell is the same as the uh, salt concentration of the uh, solution outside is the same as on the inside. As a result, there's no net water movement. Again, let's be, be careful here that we don't say there's no movement. It's possible that the cell can still lose some water and it's possible the cell can still gain some water, but there's no net movement. It doesn't overall gain or lose. It remains the same. And that's how we explain this process when we have a salt concentration that's equal on either sides of the cell membrane. Our final solution to look at is a cell in a hypertonic solution. And in a hypertonic solution, we have a uh, high salt environment. So there's more salt outside of the cell than there is inside the cell. So what this means is the salt uh, may be seeking to move into the cell, but what it will mean is that water will actually be moving out of the cell. Again, we've got a net water movement, which is out of the cell. Now, the problem with this is it means that the cell starts to become more and more flaccid. It loses its shape. It loses some of its structure. And water is such an important substance, it not only participates in a number of chemical reactions, it also helps to facilitate the movement or transport of, of uh, a large number of particles throughout the cell. So water has um, a capacity both as a um, reaction in chemical reactions and as a product uh, and also as a solvent. So the cell that loses too much water is in big trouble. Remember, the key thing about these processes is they are passive. These things will happen automatically wherever there is a gradient. If there is a diffusion gradient, then we will have a movement from high to low. So all you want to do in your examples is look at, is there, a dif uh, is there a diffusion gradient? Is there a difference in the concentrations of any substance um, on either side of the cell? Is it possible for that substance to move through the membrane? Uh, because if the membrane is semi-permeable, not all substances will move. And as we've said, if we're talking about salt water, we're talking about the salt potentially going one way or the ions going in one direction and the water going the opposite direction. If we're talking about molecules that are fairly large, then it may be that both could potentially move in both directions, but the membrane prevents one of them from diffusing. So again, like diffusion, we'll have a look at an example in class and give you a chance to have a bit more of a think about um, the processes of diffusion as os and osmosis. And I think it's probably worth putting together a little table or a Venn diagram to compare each of these processes. Thanks for watching.